Greetings, sports fans, and welcome to the Memorial Day edition of the Monday Morning Moment, coming to you on Tuesday because of Memorial Day. I hope you had a great one. hope you got to do a lot of fun stuff. I hope you got to relax, and I hope you enjoy today's moment. Uh, we're going to be in Isaiah chapter 30 this morning, and I uh, <clears throat> want to go over with you just a couple of things that the Bible talks about in Isaiah 30. Let's read them together, uh, starting in verse 8. Now go write it before them in a table, and note it in a book, that it may be for the time to come forever and ever, that this is a rebellious people, lying children, children that will not hear the law of the Lord, which say to the seers, See not, and to the prophets, Prophesy not unto us right things, speak unto us smooth things, prophesy deceits, get you out of the way, turn aside out of the path, cause the Holy One of Israel to cease from before us. Wherefore, thus saith the Holy One of Israel, because you despise this word, and trust in oppression and perverseness, and stay thereon, therefore this iniquity shall be to you as a breach, ready to fall, swelling out in a high wall, whose breaking cometh suddenly in an instant. Now, I want to focus on the uh, where God is basically quoting the people, saying, saying to the seers, those those people that God had given the ability. Now, this is Old Testament. These are people that God had given the ability to tell the truth, the truth about the future that God was bringing. They called them seers because God had given them the ability to tell the, a future truth. They thought they could see into the future. So they say to those, those seers that tell the truth of God, don't, don't see, see not, is what the, the Bible says there. And uh, they say to the prophets, don't prophesy truth to us. And remember, that's what a prophet is. Um, heard David Nasser put it this way. He says, a weatherman predicts the weather. But a prophet does not predict the future. A prophet tells the truth. And the truth of God often has to do with the future. So they're telling the prophets, Don't prophesy the truth. Say unto us smooth things. Prophesy deceits. Now what, what they're not understanding is those two things are opposed to each other. They're at war with each other. Because deceit is the opposite, opposite of prophecy. Truth is prophecy. Someone who prophesies tells the truth of God. And someone who tells lies obviously cannot be speaking words from God. So these people are begging to not hear the word of the Lord. And then they say in verse 11, Get out of the way, turn aside out of the path, but cause the Holy One of Israel to cease from before us. These people are asking to kick God out of their culture. And if you're like me, living in America today, that should sound painfully familiar. We have kicked God out of schools. We've kicked God out of our government buildings. We've had courtrooms and county buildings and uh, municipalities take the Ten Commandments down off of their walls. If that's not asking for the Holy One of Israel to be removed from our presence, I don't know what is, people. And I'm telling you, we're in a dangerous place. Because when we ask God to leave, He'll do it. Before uh, the 70s, when prayer was removed from schools, do you know how many school shootings there were? You didn't hear of mass school shootings. No, I'm not saying that uh, that praying in school will keep school shootings away. But I'm saying when we as a people ask God to leave the schools, He does, and something fills its void, fills the holy void of God, when Bible and prayer are removed, when we ask God to leave, only evil can take its place. So, God has been removed from schools. Evil has taken its place. And I think 
we see pretty plainly what the result is. So what's the cure? If removing God from our culture and our way of life is the problem, then guess what? The exact opposite of that is the solution. We need to return to Him. We need to dedicate our lives once again to following the truth, to begging God to show us what's wrong in our lives and helping us to get it right and following hard after Him. Um, you ever followed someone? You ever followed someone to a place that you didn't know where you were going? Um, when I first went to work uh, at a, an electric an electric co-op, I was driving a truck and uh, I was in rural Georgia, and I had no idea where anything was. the The crew would all get together at the very beginning of the day, and uh, they'd talk about where we were going, and uh, I was, I was brand new to the area, I was brand new to the job, and they would say, uh, okay, you know where so-and-so lives? Yeah, okay, well, you go past that house, you go a few more, go a couple roads down, you'll see a big tree, and you take a left, and they gave directions like that. The whole directions started with, okay, you know where this person lives? And I'm sitting there thinking, no, I don't know where that person lives. But uh, all of those conversations would end with me pointing at one of the guys and go, I'm following you. Don't lose me. I'm following you. And so if they would go through a yellow light, guess what? I'm following hard after that person. Because if not, I don't know where I'm going. So they go, they get going a little fast. They forget about me. They go through something. All of a sudden, I'm breaking a law. Okay? I'm running a red light or something because I can't lose them. I'm doing what I have to do to stay with them because I don't know where I'm going. We need to follow God in that exact same way. We follow Him like we have no idea what's coming up. Because you know what? We have no idea what's coming up. You don't know what's coming in your life. You don't know what ha what waits for you around the bend. You could live another eight, 80 years or so. You could die tomorrow. We don't know. We don't know what's coming. But God does. And He wants to help us live this life. He wants to help our life be as full as it possibly can be. He wants us to live for Him. Would you invite Him back into your life? Or if you've never known Him, known a relationship with Jesus Christ, would you invite Him into your heart to forgive your sins, give you a home in heaven when you die, and guide you in this life? Would you do that? Invite Him. Jesus Christ, to be the Lord of your life. I hope you've done that today, and I hope you have a great week, this, uh, this shortened Memorial Day week. Much love, y'all.